And here's your Moodle Quick Start Infusion. Eboard to Moodle in 30 minutes or less. Is this about digital education or just digital overload? Sometimes it seems like we're kind of inundated with, with options. Uh, massive online courses, BYOD, Google Drive, Edmodo, and so on. How can we navigate this, this kind of morass of digital options? I think we need some guiding principles. First of all, we need tools that are flexible. Change is the only constant in education today, and, and that will be the case in the future also. And we need to be flexible, so our tools need to be flexible. I think the days of being able to uh, you know, have, have a filing cabinet full of, full of lesson plans that you can just use year after year, is th those days are probably gone. And so we need to be ready to change and continually adjust, and we want our tools to be the same way. Secondly, we want our tools to have real utility. This isn't about tech for the sake of tech, but it's about technology that empowers, that saves time, that creates new capabilities. It's about teaching before technology. So what is Moodle? It is an open source learning management system. And as of June 2013, it had a user base of 83,008 registered and verified sites. That would be schools and colleges serving over 70 million users in seven and a half million courses with 1.2 million teachers so it's quite large and, and widespread um, especially in Europe and Asia um, it's also popular in America but here uh, Blackboard exceeds Moodle in, in popularity for this purpose it is a tool to facilitate teaching and learning so what can it do well really it can do almost everything it's, it's for resource management and access, kind of like an eboard. It's for communication. Uh, it goes beyond eboards here with messaging capabilities, news forums, and notifications. You can post assignments, and students can submit assignments. You can post assessments and build quizzes, uh, feedback, and surveys. You can do wikis right within the Moodle framework, forums, live chat, collaborative projects. It really facilitates BYOD, or, or BYOD facilitates Moodle, whichever way you want to look at it. It facilitates flipping your classroom, online homework, and online courses. So why do we want to use all this? Well, uh, or why Moodle in, in particular, instead of some of the other tools that are out there? Moodle provides one-stop organization of digital learning resources. For example, uh, Google Drive is really great for sharing files. Uh, Moodle does that and and it does more so um, it's really one-stop shopping communication feedback and what I'm calling the fishbowl classroom that is I think where we need to move in education is toward a much more collaborative model of teaching where teachers are working together co-teaching uh, you can actually virtually co-teach through Moodle as we might might talk about a little bit more and uh, also giving giving parents and community members all access to the course to see to see what's going on to see what students are doing and of course the partnership for 21st century learning framework and the information literacy portion of the common core are tied right in here to Moodle it, you can be part of the open source revolution and uh, moodle.org is is the organization that that creates and maintains Moodle and they have some great support services available there. Again, we can move toward the flipped classroom if we want, and Moodle is a great tool for differentiating learning, personalizing instruction, and even uh, working towards a mastery model of learning. So we're really moving towards self-directed learning here, and you'll see that on the Connecticut Common Core of Teaching. You'll see that emphasis in the exemplary category of the rubric. We're, we're trying to move students towards self-directed learning, and I think that Moodle is is a powerful tool in that regard. You know, flipped classes, for example, are still teacher-led, but think about this. Think about a, a Moodle site where students could help build the course as they go along. Moodle is really a springboard to the future. So what is the future? Well, of course, we can't predict it, but new technology creates new opportunities, new ideas, and new technologies, which then create more new ideas more opportunities, more new ideas, and more new technologies, of course. Automation replaces old tasks, opening time and opportunity for new ones. 
human capabilities expand as a result. That's the nature of human evolution. Education will evolve along with the rest of it, whether we're along for the ride or not. But if we miss the wave, then we'll miss out on a chance to be part of this, these exciting changes. So let's get started. Let's get our feet wet. And we're going to take this one step at a time. So here are three easy ways to take the first step from eboard to Moodle. The first step is type moodle.eosmith.org into your address bar or click the resources tab at the Eosmith homepage. Then you're going to click login in the upper right corner of the Eosmith Moodle page and enter your Eosmith username and password. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to go to the Moodle site and so you can see up here I've got moodle.eosmith.org in my address bar and this page shows up, it says Eosmith Moodle at the top, got the panther on the right, and I'm going to click login up here. And then I'm going to put my Eosmith username and password in here. Click login. And by the way, if this is your first time on the Moodle site as a teacher, uh, it's going to be your Eosmith username, but um, the password is going to be preset for you, and I'll let you know what that is. Um, just ask me. So in other words, if this is your first time, it's not going to be your Eosmith uh, password, but a different word, and then you'll have to reset it. Okay, so that's the first step. Here I am. I'm logged into Moodle. Step two, you're going to create a course. So you're going to click on your name on the Eosmith Moodle homepage, and you're going to scroll down and click Add a New Course. You give the course a name, scroll down, and save the changes. Then click the name of the course in the navigation block. Alright, now let's go through these steps on the Moodle site. Adding a course, and then uh, going into the course so that we can, we can start editing it. So find your name down here. I'm, uh, this is uh, the Moodle homepage for EO Smith. Just scroll down till you find your name under your department click on your name and you will see a list of courses if you've already created some or you'll see nothing except add a new course if you haven't created any we're going to want to click add a new course and give the course a name I'm just gonna call it test course whoops test course 4 and C4. I don't know if you you probably could just give it the same name for the short name, um, unless the full name is really long and you want to want to shorten it up here a little bit. You can put in a, a summary if you want of the course, what it's all about, maybe something from the course catalog. You could put here um, course summary files, maybe a syllabus or something, and then all you got to do is click save changes. next step is in the navigation block over here on the left these are called blocks there's a navigation block here administration block here in the navigation block I'm going to click the name of the course and this is the course right here this is what it looks like okay now we have three options here for making the transition from eboards to Moodle. And the first I'm calling easy option A. That is to use the Moodle forum as an eboard. To do this, it's very simple. You just click the news forum link at the top of the course page, click add a new topic, give the post a name, and then you can literally cut and paste from your eboard into uh, the message. And you can upload files if you like, and you can click post to forum. So let's let's see what that would look like. I'm going to click on the news forum link and this is what I see add a new topic so I'll click that and maybe I'm going to say homework week let's see homework week one and now maybe I want to go to my eboard and get some information from there so maybe I just want to literally start transferring stuff from my eboard over here I'm gonna go into post edit mode so that I can 
get hyperlinks and everything out of there as well. And let's edit the note. So what I'm going to do is just copy all this stuff that's in here, and maybe this is your, your homework assignments or whatever. And I'm going to paste that all right into this box here. Uh, looks like it did not it did not bring across the uh, the embedded video that I have, but I can I can redo that if I want. Looks like it did bring across the hyperlinks though. And fix the formatting. You you should see an editing bar right here with all sorts of options for changing text, uh, inserting images, equations, and so on. <clears throat> and then I click post a forum. And this is what it looks like. So now if students want to see this, they, they click on the news forum at the at the front page. So here's what they'll see when they when they come on here. And by the way, they will be able to get here through guest access and I'll show you that in a few minutes as well. You see the news forum here, you see the topic I put over here under latest news. That's one of the nice things about the forum. It automatically posts everything, the title of all your posts up here in a list with the date. So students can either click here to see it, or they can just click on the news forum, and that's what they see. Okay, so that's easy option A. Again, the post will be displayed in the latest news block on the right which is a nice added touch. Easy option B. This is a little bit more sophisticated, just a little bit. Gives you a, a little bit more use of, of the Moodle kind of board. Click the course name in the navigation block if you're not already in your course. And then in the upper right, you turn the editing on. Then you're looking for the gear icon. That is the settings icon. You're going to click that, and then you can cut and paste from your eboard into the the summary window and save your changes. Now actually you're looking for the gear icon under the current week or whatever whatever week you want to post something under. And then whatever you enter will show up under that week on the course homepage. So let's take a look at this option. I'm going to click the name of the course. Now in this case I have to turn editing on. This is your magic button from here on out. Turn editing on. and you'll see the screen transforms. I now have more options. I have a little gear. I have this thing over here. I have an eyeball. Only thing you need to worry about right now is this little gear. So I click this. And just just to demonstrate for demonstration purposes, I'm going to paste the same thing I just pasted into that other one right here. Again, I've got to dress it up a little bit. And I'm going to click Save Changes. Don't forget that part. There you go. And now the students will see what you wrote. So this is a little bit more sophisticated. Now they'll see what you wrote under the appropriate week, whichever week you want it to show up. So for example, this might just be a list of homework assignments instead of this descriptive stuff that I've written here. And you can do that on down. Now this, these weeks here are set up automatically by Moodle, and we can change that if you like. But that's that's the default. Whenever you create the course, it'll start there and just run the weeks chronologically. So that's easy option B. Easy option C. This is getting yet a little bit more sophisticated. This involves adding resources and activities. So again, with editing turned on, you're going to click the Add an Activity or Resource link. A window will pop up with all the options for your resources and activities you can add. You might start by scrolling down to the Resources portion of that window. And you might use a page to add a page like your eBoard Notes. So let's see how that would look. So instead of clicking this gear here, I'm going to click this link, Add an Activity or Resource. Window pops up. I'm going to scroll down so you can see here this actually gives you a picture of what's available on Moodle. Quizzes, uh, concept maps, surveys, 
wikis, all sorts of voice things that uh, World Languages has, has installed. Workshops are collaborative projects. Feedback, these are surveys that you can create. Assignments, where students upload things. But right now, we're just going to scroll down here, and we're going to keep it simple. I want to use this as an eboard, so under Resources, I'm going to click Page and Add. And now what I can do is give it a name, homework week one. I have to put a description in here. Now if you wanted if you wanted this to show up on the front page without students having to click anything, then you're going to click this here, display description, and put the text into the description box. Now I want to show you what it would look like if I didn't do that. So I'm just going to put a simple description in here, shut this off, and then I'm going to put my content in here. And I'm going to click Save and Return to Course. Now, you'll notice that the students, all they see is a link that says Homework Week 1, and they click on that, and it opens up the resource. And like I said, you can also have a description show up under here if you'd like. In fact, you can just click the gear here and you can change that. I might add an activity and resource and maybe I want to add a file. So this would allow me to upload a file, give it a name, description, and then you can just go into your computer. You can select a PDF document, a Word document, whatever it is you want the students to be able to download. You can even access it uh, access your Google Drive and upload directly from there. Lastly, I might want to add a URL. So maybe just a web link. What this will allow me to do is give it a name, a description, and then just put the web link here. Maybe this is uh, www.conacademy.org or another resource you want to point your students to and then save and return to course. I'll cancel that. <clears throat> Another feature we can use is the events feature in the calendar. So let's take a quick look at that. on the front page of my course here. This is Test Course 4. Again, if you ever need to get back here, just look in the navigation pane, look for the name of the course, click on it. Under Upcoming Events, I'm going to click New Event. Now maybe I want to say Homework Due, and we're going to say that it's due right now. Save Changes. Whoops, sorry. Guess I can't do that. Okay, so now the students, when they come to the course, let's go back to the course main page. They'll see this listed under upcoming events, homework due. They can click on go to calendar. And they can see this here. They also see the calendar down here on the side, and they see that the due date is highlighted on this calendar. Okay. And you are rolling with easy option C. Again, you can do A, B, or C. I tried to set them up so that the kind of increasing uh, complexity as we go from A to B to C, but also increasing power and flexibility. And the next step after that, you know, we really have barely scratched the surface of the vast Moodle landscape. And when you're ready, the next step is to enroll students and begin exploring further. And begin exploring the future.